Hello dear friends, we come to the final part of this molecular cloning procedure or the recombinant DNA technology part where we need to screen the gene of interest containing cell or a plasmid or a vector whatever it is. Means the gene of interest which has been introduced into the host, whether that host is stably maintaining it or not, that has to be screened. As you know very well, recombinant DNA technology has a few established steps. That is first, find a gene of interest. Second is clone it or insert it inside a vector which may be a plasmid or a bacteriophage. Then use this vector to introduce your gene of interest inside a host. That host will multiply and along with it your gene of interest multiplies. The point of interest here will be whether that host has stably maintained your gene of interest and is expressing it quite efficiently or not has to be monitored. And here comes the screening strategies. Today I will be discussing three important screening strategies from the point of view of your curriculum as well as the process which is in vogue or which is in use. Insertional inactivation immunochemical methods for detecting whether the gene of interest is inside the host or not and colony hybridization technique which is very popular. So come let's see these three methods of screening. Screening whether your gene of interest is stably present and is multiplying and is getting expressed in the host or not. So the first type of screening strategy which we are going to see is insertional inactivation as the name itself indicates when you are inserting something or a gene in another gene that gene which is getting a extra chromosomal material will get inactivated as simple as that just as we saw in the case of transposons transposons they have a tendency to shift their locus and get inserted in some active genes inactivating that. So just similarly on the basis of that principle we are deliberately using a gene which will be inactivated. In this example I would like to give you uh, the classic case of using X-gal. Now this X-gal is a molecule which is just uh, homologous to lactose. It is similar to lactose Therefore, it can be acted upon by the enzyme beta-galactosidase. Now, beta-galactosidase, if you recall, is a product of LAC-Z gene. In the Ischertia coli LAC operon, it is a product of LAC-Z gene. In a normal course of reaction, if you see this lactose, when it is acted upon by beta-galactosidase, it gives rise to galactose and glucose. Okay, so the same reaction is exploited in an artificial way by using a molecule X-gal. Now this is a chromogenic substrate. What is a chromogenic substrate? Means it gives rise to a colored compound when it is broken down. Means in its normal course of reaction it is white in color. And if it is acted upon by beta-galactosidase it gives rise to a compound due to spontaneous dimerization and oxidation this compound is released and the product which is formed 5,5-dibromo-4,4-dichloro-indigo is a blue colored compound. So if the lac Z gene is inactivated you will have a different type of color and if it remains active it will be blue or white. So let us see how this can be exploited in screening whether your gene of interest is functional or not. This technique is called as insertional inactivation and it is used in recombinant DNA technology very popularly. In this process, a bacteria carrying a foreign gene that is the gene of interest is made to insert into a restriction site inside a gene that is specially a lac Z gene therefore rendering that lac Z gene inactive or non-functional or in an inactivated state. On the contrary, while you are testing it on the plates that is the agar plates you are adding a chromogenic substrate called as X-gal. Chromogenic substrate is used to detect the particular enzymatic activity of the clone 
if the enzymatic activity is there it will be split and it will form blue color if it is not there then it will remain white this technique is called as the blue white screening method depending upon the name is given on the basis of the color of the colonies which are obtained during this process of enzymatic hydrolysis of x gal this is a commercial compound artificial compound the this system exploits the capacity of the gene which is getting inserted to function or not function now the colorless compound the colorless compound is x gal this x gal actually it is artificial compound and it is produced hence named 5 bromo 4 chloro 3 indol beta d galactoside it is a modified galactoside and used in a screening method as a replacement for lactose now this is a substrate for beta galactosidase enzyme just like it acts on lactose it also acts on this x gal or 5 bromo 4 chloro 3 indol indolyl beta d galactoside enzyme to give rise to a blue color compound when it is broken down it dimerizes and oxidizes into a blue colored compound 5 5 dibromo 4 4 dichloro indigo now all this is this is the principle of this whole mechanism how it functions let's see the insertional inactivation of lac z gene you know in this this process you see here it is the basic recombinant dna technology it is in explained in five steps you know this very well i will just repeat it for your understanding see here the first step is a cloning vector a plasmid is taken it is cleaved with restriction endonuclease enzyme and the gene of interest which is obtained from some eukaryotic chromosome the same restriction endonuclease is used to derive fragments and one specific fragment which is chosen as a gene of interest is cloned into the vector this vector is introduced into a host we have seen all these steps in very detailed fashion and each step requires precision uh, engineering of a biological mind and you can imagine the great degree of purity no contamination when this is followed the dna is introduced inside the host cell now these host cells they multiply these multiplying host cells whether they are see here in this picture you get two perspectives one is the bacteria they are multiplying and second the plasmids within the cell they are also multiplying whether these plasmids which we call it as recombinants whether they are really functional and active or not that can be checked screened by insertional inactivation and by using a uh, insertion in the functional lac z enzyme this is the principle of blue white color screening which i just showed and you can see here on the plate a real plate is shown here where you get white and blue colonies why do you get blue colonies and why do you get white colonies is if the lac z gene is a functional then x gal it gives rise to blue colonies as we have seen but if the insert that is this recombinant dna clone is inserted into a vector in the plasmid which is having a lac z gene then it will be rendered inactive non-functional lac z will become non-functional x gal will not be acted upon and the colonies will become white so the white colonies are the recombinant colonies try to understand and blue colonies are the non-recombinant colonies this is the principle of screening by using the insertional inactivation of lac z gene again to give you a better idea see the same procedure i am repeating again this is a vector in a larger picture you can see the vector containing a lag z gene now lag z gene in a normal course of expression of its gene it will give rise to a mrna it will give rise to a functional lag z protein that is beta galactosidase enzyme here and this when it will be formed this will break down this x gal into a blue colored chromogenic compound and blue colonies are obtained bacterial cells plated on medium containing x gal give rise to blue colonies if the lac z gene remains intact on the contrary you see here the insert this is the gene of in interest if it gets properly inserted into the lac z gene so we are using this lac z as a, a chair you can say a chair to 
split the gene of interest when it gets inserted naturally the lac z gene rendered inactive is rendered inactive the mrna which is produced will be produced of the insert and not of the lac z non functional lac z gene colonies remain white okay so in a simple perspective you can see lac z gene it encodes a beta galactosidase enzyme eco r1 that is the restriction endonucleolytic cut is made in the lac z gene and a insert is a recombinant insert is introduced so no lac z activity the colony becomes white if the insert is not there means there is a chance number of recombinants formed if 100 cells are taken and 90 cells become recombinant you have a 90 percent efficiency on the contrary if you are taking 100 cells as host and only 10 percent are become recombinant you have only 10 percent recombinant efficiency to check this recombination efficiency we need to screen these uh, cells host cells and if it is not inserted then you get blue colonies so on a plate you can see more the number of blue colonies more blue colonies are there you you can judge that here the 50 50 percent chance is there recombinants are less and the non recombinants are more and the principle is lag z which encodes beta galactosidase it converts x gal into a colorless x gal which is basically colorless is converted into blue compound I have given the name of that compound. It is also uh, called as, as you can see here, it is called as the colored compound is called as 55 dibromo 44 dichloro indigo. This is the colored compound, and the colorless compound, which is X gal, is called as 5 bromo 4 chloro 3 indolyl beta D galactopyronoside or beta galactoside. You can say simple. Okay, so this vector it contains the lag Z insert fragments insert renders the lag Z inactive and no lag Z activity white colonies. This is simple explanation of the insertional inactivation used for screening whether the recombinants are there or not. More the number of white colonies more successful is your recombination process in the recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineering or molecular cloning. So this insertional inactivation here I can explain it very precisely with the help of PUC18 vector. Now this I have already explained the disruption which is there. Now in the at the bottom picture if you see any vector it contains a replication origin gene. It contains an antibiotic resistant gene as a marker we have seen that and polylinker sites this is the region where the gene of interest will be inserted and it has a polylinker site you can see an array of enzymes hints pa pst bam sma etc eco r1 all these restriction endonucleases can be used to introduce cut here in the gene of interest so this is the ampicillin resistant uh, gene this is the replication origin gene and this is lac z and a polylinker gene in puc18 this lac z as you can see it contains various restriction endonucleolytic cleavage sites now lac z gene is the point of interest in in this puc18 as an example for insertional inactivation the gene in the cloning site of lac z of puc18 vector this is UC stands for plasmid which was developed in University of California. For this more detail on this you can see my lecture on the vectors, plasmid vectors. Okay. So this PUC18 lag Z complements the host defect in lag Z, PUC18 into the host organism, active lag Z beta galactosidase from plasmid cleaves X gal, it gives rise to blue colonies and the gene cloned into polylinker if there is an insertion of gene into polylinker then lag z gets disrupted no cleavage of x gal and white colonies are formed so this is how the insertional inactivation functions and it is a very efficient tool to detect whether the recombinants they arise or not now apart from the lag z gene there is a insertional inactivation uh, method which can be used for Active, uh, inactivation of antibiotic resistant gene also see here I have shown you ampicillin resistant gene what if if we don't introduce the gene here in lag z but introduce it into ampicillin resistant what will happen then the 
resistance factor will be lost that also can be exploited insertional inactivation is not a whole and sole property of one gene like lag z i have given lag z just as an example they it can be used for various other genes also i will give you two examples in brief second is insertional inactivation of antibiotic resistant genes similarly you can see here a pbr322 plasmid which contains two antibiotic resistant markers one is ampicillin resistant marker another is tetracycline resistant marker when the gene of interest is inserted into ampicillin resistant gene the cell will become ampicillin sensitive naturally and the tetracycline resistant factor is retained that can be checked on a transformed bacteria when you transform this plasmid by any of the transformation methods by the insertion methods which we have seen electroporation or chemical uh, transformation or transduction lipos liposome method any when you introduce this into host cell it is a transformed bacteria we can call it as a recombinant bacteria now this has to be maintained the original transformed bacterial plate has to be maintained therefore this is replica plated onto two different plates you take the master plate this will be the master plate use a replica plating technique how that is done i will show you in the next method it is a very simple and interesting method you use a stamp i will show what that stamp is it is made up of velvet cloth you use that stamp on the master plate and take it and place it on two different plates one containing tetracycline other containing ampicillin what will happen as it has lost its resistance to ampicillin on the plate containing ampicillin you will not find some colonies one two three you can see the ones which i have circled here transformed colonies are present on the master plate on the tetracycline plate all the colonies will be there because tetracycline resistance is there and ampicillin has not been added in the media therefore all the colonies may grow but when you replica plate it on a ampicillin containing plate some colonies are missing here trace out those colonies which are missing from the master plate and these are your transformed bacteria because these are sensitive they did not grow on ampicillin juxtapose it on the master plate and see that not grown colonies can be traced out and select the clone and that replica plate which is there on the uh, master plate will show that these are the transformed colonies the clone will be ampicillin sensitive and tetracycline resistant whereas the original plasmid it will be ampicillin resistant as well as tetracycline resistant so this is insertional inactivation of antibiotic resistance gene similarly insertional inactivation of a c1 repressor gene c l repressor of the uh, of the phage that is a lambda phage can be used now here c1 repressor of the lambda phage it is a repressor which encodes for uh, lysogeny see this figure 2 a and b the c1 gene cl c1 gene actually it encodes for a c1 repressor which is responsible for formation of lysogen see here when there is a temperature induction the c1 repressor enters into the lytic cycle uh, the lysogenic cycle is uh, what you can say c1 repressor is active and the lytic cycle is stopped and lysogenic cycle no plaque formation is there the c1 gene it encodes for c1 repressor which is responsible for formation of lysogens in the presence of a functional c1 the plaques contain unlysed host cells if there are unlysed host cells they will have a turbid plaque means in the case of a lysogen you will have turbid plaques and in the case of a virulent lytic cycle you will have clear plaques okay this feature can be used to screen the clone to detect the functional c1 means absence of a clone or absence of c1 presence of a c, uh, insert or a absence of a c uh, insert you see now he in this if there is a restriction endonucleolytic cleavage by bam h1 and a gene of insert is inserted then c1 repressor repressor will not function as it will not function lysogeny is not initiated lytic cycle is initiated plaques will be clear so if there are clear plaques then the gene of in interest is inserted so this is insertional inactivation c1 repressor is inactivated here so like this this method of insertional inactivation can be used not only for 
some uh, chromogenic substrate containing genes like LAXZ but also for antibiotic resistant markers and also for the virulent and uh, lysogenic plaque formation of the lambda phages. So this is the first method of screening that is insertional inactivation. Now let us see the second method that is the immunochemical methods for screening. Screening by immunochemical methods are specially used when the gene therapy products are administered into humans and there is a immunological reaction taking place inside the body. So this method is specifically based upon the specificity of antibody towards the antigen. That is the antigenic epitope which is present on the protein and is expressed in a particular clone. Now all the cells they are taken on a master plate. The cells are transferred onto a matrix that is usually a nitrocellulose plate. Now why this is done? Why? Because the number of diseases which are associated with a gene in humans they have been or they can be identified by this method. There are a number of diseases which give rise to proteins which are overproduced, overexpressed, increased expression or unique expression of a particular protein takes place in a disease condition. That patient body which produces a protein, the patient body develops an antibody against it. Try to understand the basic principle of this screening method. There are various diseases which are associated with genes and these genes due to increased expression of these genes, what happens? A unique protein is produced and that protein is very particular to that patient's diseased condition. Now that patient body develops an antibody against that protein. The developed antibody is taken to identify the protein expressing the clone in this test. This is a somewhat what you can say mutual and complementary and somewhat complicated process where the human serum is also needed here in the form of antibody. Now the cells they are chosen, they are taken on a plate that is the master plate. The cells are those which are containing your gene of interest for the study in gene therapy. Try to understand which will be later on administered into this is a cell line culture master plate. This is a cell line not your uh, nutrient agar plate or so. This is a cell line culture where the cells they are even uh, for some if it is not a really human gene therapy you can even use nutrient agar plates also here depends upon the type of the recombinant DNA technology which is employed. So the master plate from the master plates the cells are transferred onto a nitrocellulose paper means a similar round paper of the plate size is taken and placed on the colonies. This is taken up on the colonies there is an irreversible attachment of the cells onto the nitrocellulose paper that is a matrix which is called as a matrix. Now this is washed with certain chemicals to wash away the cellular components and only the DNA or the RNA is attached onto the matrix. Then that is treated with a primary antibody and then a secondary antibody and later on by autoradiographic techniques that particular cell which will contain your gene of interest with radioactive labeled antibodies the uh, fluorescence is there and on an XR plate it is developed. I will explain stepwise in my next slide. But the screening by immunological, immunological method is based upon the principle that various diseases they are associated with genes. These genes they express and produce disease relevant proteins. Antibodies are produced against these proteins. Those antibodies are used to screen the gene uh, in the test. So how it is done as you can see in five steps and this is a picturistic depiction. I will just explain how this happens. First step is preparation of a replica plate. This is very important because as the original genomic cDNA library that is your gene of interest which is nothing but a colony on the plate. It, the host cell is harboring your gene of interest. We call it as a original genomic cDNA library. When it is there are th hundreds of uh, micro, uh, microbial cells, the host cells to be very precise the host cells harboring your gene of interest that is called as a cDNA library and it is 
capricious and if you just go through the process that cells will be washed away so you need to retain the original cells that will be called as a master plate so what we do is that we don't use the original cells from the plate but we just take a replica of this by using a replica pad or a velvet pad there are specially designed pads nowadays which contain spikes it can be in a sterile condition it is stamped and then on a next similar plate it is replica plated as the original cells need to be retained the first part is preparation of a replica plate okay as you can see here the gene of interest is inserted there is a fusion protein and this is packed into a host cell on the bacteria a bacterial lawn is there on this then the green colored nitrocellulose paper is placed this is called as blotting blotting is transferring the clones onto nitrocellulose membranes or the recombinant cells of course here there are 50 50 percent chances or whatever it is more the number of recombinants more will be the percentage of recombinants to check that only we are screening how many recombinants are being formed so for this purpose the nitrocellulose paper is overlaid on the colonies this process is second part which is called as blotting the cells are transferred onto nitrocellulose membrane to get a similar pattern of colonies from the master plate onto the nitrocellulose plate nitrocellulose paper let us say okay so the cells on the membrane are then lysed the released protein is denatured and allowed to bind to the membrane means whatever the proteins which are expressed inside the host by your gene of interest this is somewhat different technique we are not really targeting the dna or the gene of interest but inside the host the gene of interest which has expressed the protein that is retained proteins they bind on to nitrocellulose Re rest everything is washed off the cells are washed off dna rna genetic material everything is washed off that is what is the specificity of this nitrocellulose paper it retains the proteins which proteins those proteins which are present on the colonies here on the plate on a bacterial lawn so very interesting technique you are taking a nitrocellulose paper putting it on the lawn taking it out then you are having colonies you are treating it with various chemicals so as to wash away the bacterial cells cell wall dna rna everything only the proteins which are expressed by your gene of interest will be retained on this paper okay then the second is treatment with primary antibody now this protein will be treated with antibody if it is disease from where is this antibody obtained as i showed you in the earlier slide it is obtained from the patient who is being checked for this particular therapy or whatever it is so the membrane third part is to treat it with primary antibody the membrane is incubated with antibody having immunoreactivity towards this protein so you will have an antigen antibody reaction and there the filter filter with primary antibody will be more what you can say stabilized so the primary antibody will bind to the target protein due to exclusive specificity towards its antigen the membrane is washed to remove any unbound antibody so you have a base which is created now there is a secondary antibody treatment the secondary antibody is radioactive labeled treatment with secondary antibody is done membrane is incubated with secondary antibody which recognizes the primary antibody secondary antibody is labeled with a enzyme which is radioactive labeled like horseradish peroxidase peroxidase enzyme or alkaline phosphatase enzyme is used secondary antibody will bind to the primary antibody which is an enzyme a radioactive labeled enzyme and it will allow the detection of location of primary antibody the membrane is washed away what will happen the secondary antibody will go and bind only to those uh, region where the primary antibody has bound to the protein not all the colonies will show this reaction try to understand though you have used a primary antibody not all the cells which are containing the protein will be showing this antigen antibody reaction only those cells here come back here on the plate those cells which are having your gene of interest and inside those cells which gene of interest has expressed a protein only those specific colonies will show 
this will have attachment to this radioactive labeled enzyme and this later on is developed on x-ray film this x-ray film now can be taken see this last part will be taken onto this plate keep that x-ray film on the plate master plate and you can see which colony exactly is your recombinant colony so this is how the immunological method why it is called as immunological method because you are using here antibodies primary antibodies secondary antibodies and then radioactive labeled enzymes to detect whether the reaction is perfect or not the final is spot development by autoradiography yes i will summarize this method as you can see immunological screening of expression uh, gene with a primary antibody and labeled secondary antibody is done usually the label is with the enzyme alkaline phosphatase or horseradish peroxidase enzyme so you can see the whole immunochemical method i will summarize it in very few steps the bacterial vector the gene of interest then which is transformed into e coli cells colonies they produce the protein inside we are not interested in the dna but the protein that protein which is produced it is transferred onto a replica plate transferred onto a pro uh, nitrocellulose nitrocellulose is very specific to the protein then radio labeled antibody specific protein is uh, uh, developed onto a autoradiographic plate and this autoradiogram is then juxtaposed you take this autoradiogram and keep it on the master plate and you will exactly come to know which colony was your recombinant cell so this is a very interesting method immunochemical method or the immunological screening method finally let us see what is colony hybridization colony hybridization is based upon the basic principle that any dna sequence information that can be exploited with a very general rule of the adenine pairing with thymine and guanine pairing with cytosine which is very fixed and it is so universal that this basic phenomenon can be used to design a probe dna means you have a gene of interest that gene of interest is used to initially when you just uh, design the gene of interest at the same time a small probe is designed not necessary for the whole length of your uh, gene of interest but a small segment which corresponds to some region of your gene of interest can be designed it can be radioactive labeled so what usually you do is let us say if i have a uh, if i want to find a pin in a haystack actually this phrase is very applicable to any method of screening screening and finding your recombinant dna is just like finding a needle in a haystack now what if i have a very powerful magnet and i just keep the magnet on the haystack the pin will just come and attach it becomes very easy isn't it so that magnet is the probe so you design a probe label it with radioactivity why we are always radioactive labeling it is because if that has a half life period of sustaining the course of the reaction then that will keep its fluorescence till the time you can retrieve it and detect and say that yes this was my probe initially radioactive labeled compound which i used in the initial stage of the experiment and now i am finding it at the end of the experiment means my recombinant dna is there so what is the idea the idea is a particular dna sequence from the gene of interest can be easily identified if you have a complementary single stranded dna sequence not actually of the whole length of your gene of interest but some complementation which is unique in its nature and also radioactive labeled so what i do i use this probe and send it to the uh, pieces of dna or the gene of interest the dna sequence which is used as a probe can be identified by a suitable detection technique which usually is autoradiography or the fluorescence detection techniques the position of the probe is the actual site of the desirable clone of containing specific sequence means where will this probe will go and attach definitely that will go and attach at your site of gene of interest how this is achieved it's very interesting come let's see very in brief and a small and a 
इंटरेस्टिंग मेथड ऑफ कॉलोनी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन द कंप्लीट प्रोसीजर ऑफ कॉलोनी हाइब्रिडाइजेशन हैज फाइव स्टेप्स फर्स्ट इज प्रिपरेशन ऑफ अ सुटेबल रेडियो एक्टिव प्रोब एज आई जस्ट सेड देन प्रिपरेशन ऑफ अ रिप्लिका प्लेट वाई ऑलवेज अ रिप्लिका प्लेट इज नीडेड is because your original plate which you are using for the course of the experiment needs to be treated with certain chemicals where you just lyse the bacterial cells you kill the cells and expose its genetic material either the dna is needed sometimes either it is rna is needed sometimes proteins is are needed if dna is being uh, analyzed you call it as southern blot in gel electrophoresis if rna northern blot and if it is proteins which are expressed uh, detected you call it as a western blot so the cells are lysed when the cells are lysed you lose your original recombinants to retain the original recombinants the preparation of replica plate is always desirable the third step in colony hybridization is just like what we saw in immunological assay transferring the colonies onto nitrocellulose membrane this nitrocellulose membrane has a very good affinity towards dna rna and proteins then for this on this nitrocellulose instead of adding antibodies you add a solution of probe dna where will this probe dna go and attach definitely that colony which you had your gene of interest it will be attaching so hybridization with a specific probe and fifth is washing all the unwanted material and developing the membrane by auto radiography means what is auto radiography you have this nitrocellulose paper which is having a fluorescent part somewhere keep a x ray film on it and develop it when you take out the x ray film there will be a white spot on the black x ray film which is due to this fluorescence and that is uh, development by auto radiography so the master plate is replica plated the cells are lysed when the cells are lysed as you can see the bound dna on the nitrocellulose matrix retains then you add your probe radioactive label probe on this dna what where will this probe go this probe is complementary to your gene of interest plus it is radioactive labeled so only that cell which is recombinant which had your gene of interest will find some complementation with your probe which will be then later on developed on the autoradiographic plate so you can see the first step here preparation of a suitable radioactive probe now these five steps i would just like to explain in brief all these five steps let us see the first is very important that is preparation of suitable radioactive probe as you can see now this is your single stranded dna which is gene of interest it can be anything a t g g c so on and so forth you take a small fragment you prepare it artificially in your laboratory by adding mononucleotides variety of enzymes are there to do this while choosing you take ra radioactive labeled nucleotides and prepare a small radioactive dna probe mix it with single stranded dna it will base pair with your gene of interest at a complementary site radioactive dna probes are basically single stranded dna molecules with a radioactive tag their sequence is usually complementary to a single stranded sequence of dna which the genetic engineer is using that is the gene of interest so the probe is prepared and released near the complementary site that is on the nitrocellulose paper it is released and then we track to see whether it has really bound to some colony uh, or not once it binds the target dna that is the gene of interest is identified very easily now the question is how these radioactive probes are prepared that should be a question now as your curriculum demands this explanation in short i have kept it in short and i have mentioned here that radioactive probes can be produced by different techniques like nick translation technique end filling technique and random labeling techniques those who are very interested can google these three techniques and go on to find out it's very interesting how the radioactive labeled probes are designed so by this methods you get a probe dna and the dna molecule is usually labeled by incorporating radioactive labeled nucleotides usually p32 that is phosphorus 32 is used the sugar phosphate backbone at that point of phosphorus is used now again a question may arise how these radioactive labeled nucleotides are prepared that is the radioactive techniques 
which is very popular and easily done by scientists is another area of study so the first part in the construction of this uh, or detection or screening of the cdna is preparation of a suitable radioactive probe the second part is preparation of a replica plate now as you can see the replica plate is done by using such pads this contains thin pins which can be placed on a master plate then simultaneously twice on a selective and a non-selective medium it is posed that is it is stamped you can see these colonies which are marked here two types of colonies are there two types of colonies you can get on the plates now here some colonies are missing those colonies which are mix missing they are then tested or matched with the master plate and detected that these are the recombinants uh, original genomic gene of interest or the cdna library is very precious it will be consumed later on therefore this replica plate is very essential either such ready-made plate uh, stamps are available which needs to be cleaned sterilized before use or simply use and throw such types of velvet pads these are silk pads velvet pads which have velvet fibers sterile can be used to rep replica plate the master master plates okay second is use of replica plate the next part is transferring the colonies on nitrocellulose membrane blotting this is the third part just uh, please neglect the numbers the uh, numbers have gone wrong anyway this is the third step transfer of colonies onto nitrocellulose membrane that is blotting how it is done you can see the clone is transferred onto nitrocellulose membrane with the retaining the identical pattern of these colonies onto the nitrocellulose filter master plate with the colonies of the bacteria the uh, with a sterile forcep and sterile conditions this paper is placed on the agar then on this some treatment with uh, chemicals so sodium hydroxide etc lyses the cells and only bacterial dna strands are retained on these strands then next hybridization with your specific probe that is radioactive labeled probe is done and on this you can see only two colonies they got attached with your radioactive labeled probe so the third step is to transfer the colonies onto nitrocellulose membrane the technique is called as blotting clone is transferred onto nitrocellulose filter paper and the identical pattern of the colonies are retained on the nitrocellulose membrane that is called as a matrix cells on the membrane they are lysed and the dna is released it is denatured deprotonated and allowed to bind on the membrane two processes are important here remember the cells are lysed proteins are removed and the double stranded dna is converted into single stranded dna without losing the spot there is a irreversible binding of the colonies and the dna also remains there once the dna is there dna is converted into single stranded dna third step is hybridization with a specific probe you have used a small probe which will now complement with the single strands on that colony which contains your gene of interest so a labeled probe which was prepared in step one is added here probe will bind to the target dna due to base, base pairing specificity as i just told that is the principle and the membrane is washed then to remove any unbounded probes why these other colonies they have not bound with the probe because there is no gene of interest so out of these colonies in this example only two colonies have become your recombinant colonies or recombinant dna host cells are there present in only two colonies lastly washing is done and these plates are developed on auto radiograms that is placed it x-ray film is placed and kept it overnight wherever there is fluorescence that will give spots on the x-ray film that x-ray film is developed and this plate this is the same plate which was used in the first step this plate is kept on the master plate and you can see these two colonies have been identified as colonies containing your gene of interest position of the labeled probe is detected by this auto radiogram placing on the master plate and position of the colonies can be matched with the master plate to get exact location of the colony which has got your gene of interest 
so this is how the colony hybridization technique is done very interesting very simple but a great deal of skill is needed to do all this and the therefore no doubt those biologists they are called as genetic engineers so this is the summary of colony hybridization as you can see i will show it in seven steps the master plate whatever i just explained i will summarize it in seven steps the master plate with the colonies of bacteria containing cloned segments or the foreign dna or the gene of interest is there so you take a nitrocellulose filter paper make a replica of master plate on the nitrocellulose paper then it there will be exact colonies on the plate on the nitrocellulose treat this nitrocellulose paper with alkaline solution like sds sodium duodecyl sulfate this is a detergent sodium duodecyl sulfate or alkaline noh can also be used in the third step this filter is treated as i just said with sodium hydroxide which separates the dna and converts the double stranded dna into single stranded dna here in the second step when you wash it with detergent the cells are lysed and all the cellular material the cell debris is washed away in the third step using nih double stranded dna is converted into single stranded dna in the fourth step you add the radioactive labeled probes so specific colonies which have this affinity of atgc base pairing will bind irreversibly bound to the dna probe gene of interest is bound probe will hybridize with the desired gene from the bacterial cells then you wash the filter to remove any unbound probes so that will not interfere with the autoradiogram later on then on develop these nitrocell uh, nitrocellulose paper with a uh, autoradiogram that is a x-ray film and then compare it with the master plate and identify the colonies containing your gene of interest and this is how colony hybridization is done so i hope you understood this screening techniques which is very interesting and a very vital part of recombinant dna technology finally with this paper in your curriculum we are coming to the end of the course and uh, we will be seeing one very interesting topic as a final lecture in this paper human insulin expression in e coli as application of recombinant dna technology as you can see in this picture recombinant bacteria is grown in a fermentation tank in 1960s i would like to give you a small interesting historical aspect of this application of creating human insulin in a ischerschia coli is such a revolutionary method that if you peep in the history you will see that earlier it was pig insulin pigs were slaughtered to get human insulin and it had some diverse side effects on the skin they used to give rashes on the humans later on eli lilly was the first company which used to produce uh, bovine insulin or pig insulin but later on it uh, created this recombinant used this recombinant dna technology to produce insulin in a fermentation tank believe this was something revolutionary human insulin being produced in a fermentation tank by using ischerschia coli in which human insulin gene has been cloned remarkable that was because what was the process earlier pigs were slaughtered their pancreas were taken they were harvested and hundreds of pigs had to be slaughtered and the pig insulin had some was administered for diabetic patients that had some adverse reactions so this is a very interesting application which we will be seeing in the next and final lecture of our molecular biology paper expression of a human insulin gene in ischerschia coli till that time i want you to go through all this beautiful steps of genetic engineering and recombinant dna technology or what we popularly call in our paper as molecular cloning so have a nice time enjoy these things and discuss any problems again i request you to go through the links which i have given below for preparing notes let the questions arise let the doubts arise we will have a good discussion academic discussion which will not only enhance your concepts but will also give newer insights to me questions are the basis for progress remember that ask questions have questions and solve those questions thank you have a nice time